Hey, Board Game Maniacs, Maniac Rob here with a special guest. Don't really say much. Anyhow, we are playing none other than Resident Evil 2, the board game. If you've been following along on the channel, you've already seen our two previous videos, which is what's in the box and also the first scenario. Now we're on to the second scenario. It's scenario 2A, the star's office. Leon finally made it to the... Raccoon City Police Department, and now he has to make it to the office, the star's office. And the reason for that being is because he noticed that Raccoon City was overrun by zombies. So there's nothing else that he can do. Claire's kind of hanging out into the, uh, the beginning of the police station for Raccoon City, just guarding the door. She's not going to be in this scenario. It's going to be, again, we're playing the solo mission, and it's only Leon. That is going to be going up against this scenario by himself. No help whatsoever. No help whatsoever for Leon. So he's going to have to go and he has to get to the star's office. But there is a hitch. And that hitch is he has to find the key to the star's office. It is the Raccoon Police Department. It is sealed up tight. So he can't bust open the doors. He's not strong enough. They're metal doors and everything else. So he needs to find that key to be able to get into the star's office. Let's go to the board. Let's go to the board and look to see what the board setup is, where the characters are, and continue on with this epic game of Resident Evil 2, the board game. That's right. Okay, let's go. Boo! Dude, I even have my mask on and I can smell it. Resident Evil 2, the board game. For this scenario, we are using Resident Evil 2, the board game scenario book. And if you flip, it is on page four, if I'm not mistaken. See right there, page four. And it is the star's office, scenario brief 2A. You can see up here, so for every scenario, I'll have amount of players that is recommended for this. And I am playing a solo mission, so this here is a, a solo game, but it's not like you can't play more than one person here because there's other places you can place them to play it. This just lets you know that it's recommended for one, not that you can't play anymore. So having said that, let's move on a bit. So you see here, it tells you what it is. Pretty much we have to get to the stairs office and have no zombies or monsters on the stairs tile or the stairs office and we win the game. Now, there are special rules and the special rules are as follow. Safe Haven. A character on the stairs office tile does not have to draw a card during the tension phase. That's going to be pretty good. Because if you have zombies on the star's office tile with you and you would draw another tension card that says, you know, like populate the nearest uh, spawn point with two zombies or what have you, then that would not be good. And you see here is normal card decks. It tells you what the starting items are. Uh, item deck A, item deck B, tension deck, and you get more amber cards and more red cards than what you did in the first scenario and also more green cards too as well. An additional note, you get some tokens. The thing with this too as well now is when you're playing a campaign, whether it is solo mode or if you are playing with more than one person, up to four people, the starting items you're going to ignore this because you carry over the items that you had from your first scenario, so we would ignore this. Just keep that in mind. Another thing that I just want to cover briefly here is in the core rulebook, page 23, under solo play, it tells you stuff to do if you are playing it as a single player for your solo mode, obviously, or because if you were playing more than one, it wouldn't be a solo mode. It says, reduce all boss, bosses dial on the health by 10. So. If you're coming up against a boss that has 25 health, you're going to drop it down by 10, so it'll be 15. Yes, I can do math. During the Birkin Stage 5 boss encounter, lower all threshold values by 10. Now, we are not going to be, or we may not encounter this boss in the scenario 2A, but it's just letting you know for solo mode, that's what you do. 
The character begins each scenario on the square marked with a one. Now, some maps, which I'll show you shortly, have like starting points for one character or two character, or four characters or three characters. So this one here, you'd put it, your starting character on one. Any attack or effect which would cause, that would be you knocked out or you dead, reduces the character's health track to danger instead. Unless the health track is already at danger. Pretty much, so if you're following along, you know what I'm talking about with the health track because I think it was Claire get dropped down by one for the health. So if it went down to the last one and then saying about, you know, if it's either asleep or dead, you're just gonna die and that's pretty much it. Oh, I hope I don't die though. Each scenario brief has a minimum character number icon, such as this icon right here, and it's shown in the upper right hand corner, which I showed already. If this number is two, the player is required to control a second character for the duration of this scenario. Solo play mode is fully compatible with the campaign mode as well as with most expansions. So that's just a little touch upon this solo play, because this is it for solo play. Nothing else really changes. Before we go over the map a little bit more in detail, I just want to mention too as well, if you are following along, you'll notice with the first gameplay video that we did, that I didn't draw the tension deck after every character finishes their turn and the reaction turn. The reason for this being because I am playing a solo mode, I couldn't find it in the book that you would only draw the tension card once, or you would have to draw it for how many characters are on the board. So it, I kind of house ruled that so that I'm going to do the same here too as well. Even though Leon is the only character in this, in this uh, mission for the scenario, for the campaign I should say. But if I had two or three characters that I had to control, I'm not going to go and pull uh, a tension card out of the tension deck after every character finishes because I am playing solo mode. That's just a house rule. I can't find if it's any different in any other way. If you know a page number where it states, you know, like if you're, you're playing solo mode, you only draw once during the character's activation at, for the tension card, not for every character. Let me know if you found that. Comment down below, timestamp it, and refer to a page number. If not, I may switch over for this, but you know, I kind of like it this way where it, it just makes the game go a little bit easier for me. Oh, yeah, easier. But this ain't gonna be as easier, this campaign mission, because as you can see, we have second floor and first floor. So there's two floors that Leon has to go through. Also on the map, you're probably noticing that there's, it don't look like the first one, the first map for the first scenario was all green. Oh, there's the stairs office right there too, by the way. But now you have like yellow map tiles, orange map tiles, and also the green map tiles. What that means is that when you go through a door, okay, so let's just say, okay, this is the starting one right here. This is where Leon is going to start the game. So once he goes through that door, it's the yellow. What you're going to do is you're gonna take the D6 that came with the game that has the umbrella symbol onto it, and you're going to roll it, and you're gonna to refer to the chart to find out what happens. So this tile that you're in, you're gonna roll the dice once, the die once, and it tells you if you get a six, it's empty. If you get a five, unsettling feeling, four, three, two, and so on. So that tells you, so it's like the game. When you go into a room, you don't know what zombies are there. So this is the way they kind of make it be like the game. On top of that, we have amber tiles too as well. These are a lot more difficult, you can see here. And, and one huge difference between the first mission and the second mission is walkers, yes. Key cards, here, here, and here, yes. There's A items, B items, which we had in the, the second one, but the thing is, as you can see here, there's an item box that you're gonna place there so that you can save your, you know, you can drop off equipment or what have you. Now, on top of that, what makes this a lot different is this guy right here. That little icon is none other than 
a liquor. So there's a liquor in this game. Never, in, never encountered a liquor yet. This is my second game. Hopefully it's gonna go over pretty well. And I'm not gonna try to kill everything, even though you see that the, the both floors are riddled with zombies, but we don't know what's gonna be in these amber tiles and yellow tiles until we roll the dice and see what happens. Very scary. But anyhow, I know this is a long clip, but pretty much this is where we have to end our turn. And this is how we win. If we go there and there's no zombies or enemies on this tile and we end our turn, that is how you win. Because it says right there, there it is there. Okay. In this scenario, the character must find the stars key and make their way to the stars office on the second floor. The players successfully complete this scenario. If all characters are on the tile marked with the stars office and there are no enemies on that tile. Ooh, so yeah, no enemies here. We have to be careful of that. And there's stairs now too as well. So where we're starting on the first floor, which is here, we're going to have to make our way up or this way. We're gonna to have to search for these items because in these items is the stairs office key that we're going to need. And then we get to here, where is the stairs to go to the second floor, which brings us here. And then once we're in there, we have to make our way this way to get into the stairs office. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna venture here, but you can see there's also some tokens there. So if we don't pit, find the stairs key here, we're gonna have no choice but to search onto the second floor to find it before we go there. Let's go to the board and look at it, see where all the walkers are, or the zombies are, and the liquor that we set up, and we'll just go from there. You can see I have the first floor all set up. I got the zombie card for reference, and I got the liquor card for reference. Liquor has three wounds, ooh, ooh. Zombies are one, and you can see the the locked doors that are here, and you can also see there's the liquor. B tokens, A tokens that you can search for. There's some walkers there. Leon is starting here. That's his card. Now he carried over the handgun bullets from the first mission because he finished it successfully. He was able to carry it over. His health is still at fine. It was fine before, but at the end of each scenario, you're gonna raise it up to a point. And also handgun ammo is at 15 because it refreshes. And we are looking at the second floor here. So this is the stairs office tile right here. <sighs> so we got some work ahead of us. It's definitely gonna take us a little bit to do a lot more attention card decks there and A and B for the inventory dice. It also said to, to put down by the board these four different types of tokens because they could be encountered from red and yellow cards. So echoes in the darkness and prehensile grasp. So yeah, that's careful. Oh, and that is it. Board's all set up, we're ready to go. So let's start trying to find that darn key to open the star's door. Leon's turn, because he is the only one. It's all up to Leon to get into the star's office. Hopefully he's gonna be able to make it. But remember, we do have two continues. So if we fail, we can spend one of the continues to go through this again. Four actions, Leon's going one, Two, he's opening the door. Now, he's going in for three. Before he closes that door, again, we are going to have to, because judging from the, uh, the map, this tile here is yellow. So we're gonna have to go and roll and compare to see what happens in this tile. Because since we opened the door, I said, you know what? We opened the door, so we're gonna roll on it before he went. So that was one action, two actions to open the door. Now we're gonna have to roll before he actually enters. Cause the door is open. If there's any walkers in there, they're gonna hear the door open and they're gonna be alert that Leon's going in there. Let's go to the dice rolling box and see what happens. Here goes the D6 with the special logo. Let's roll it. Hopefully nothing bad. That's a two. So let's look in the book. We rolled a two. Two zombies at the closest spawn point. Lovely. So you can see here in the chart, 
number two right there two zombies at the closest zomb at the closest spawn point so there we open the door and right in front of the door are two zombies <laughs> It does say the closest uh, spawn point to the character, and that is it. So, Leon already did just two actions. That's why I moved back out there, because once you open the door, you have to do the, uh, the dice rolling and the spawning. So, Leon has some, uh, some stuff here that he can do. Is he going to shoot, or is he going to try to evade? Now, we all know that if he stays where he's at... The zombies are going to be able to move and they're going to do the uh, the suicide lunge. They're both going to die. But Leon is going to take two wounds right off, just like that. And I don't want that to happen. So I think what Leon's going to do for his third action, he's going to pick this zombie right here and try to shoot him in the head. Hopefully he's going to get lucky. And what we're going to do just to try to uh, get this done quickly is he's gonna shoot with three shots. Three shots. Whoop. Because he started off with 15. So let's go to the dice rolling box, use the three blue die and see what happens. All right, Leon, you can do this. You can do this. Oh yeah, look at that. All he needed was that. It's a double. Zombies have one wound, so one zombie is Caputo. Zombie's dead. Just like that. Pew! Boom. Dead. That was his third action. Okay. So, he has one more action to perform. And I'm thinking what he's going to do for his third act, or fourth action. Is he's not going to stay there because he's going to get a hit on him. A hit on him. So his fourth one, he's going to go in the zone right with the, the zombie, just like that. Just so, because the, the zombie has a zero range, it's not going to have to do the suicide lunge, but he's going to try to attack Leon, and then Leon is going to try to evade that. And Leon's evade, as we all know, is two dice. So let's go to the box and see what happens there. Looking for at least one evade on this. Come on, baby. Uh-oh. Nope. He did nothing. He didn't evade. So that means that poor Leon takes one hit or one bite right away. Ouch. Leon loses one wound. He's still in the green, but he's not fine anymore. I just did it off camera. I adjusted his health track down to that. But because he failed, he still gets to have a free push action of one square away Jason to him. So I'm thinking it's going to push him right here beside. And that's going to be it. So that ends Leon's turn. And that is the end of the reaction phase because we play that right afterwards, which we just did. And now it's onto the tension deck. I um, don't like this one. It's making a lot of tension. I feel a lot of tension. All right. First tension card drawn. No escape. So it is a yellow card. That is not a good thing. So I'm going to read this off camera. Okay, behind, behind you, hear the creak of a door opening and closing again, accompanied by the sounds of shambling footsteps. Uh-oh, that means it's zombies. Locate the tile closest to the active character where there are enemies but no characters. Okay, so the closest, locate the closest, the tile closest, not the square, the tile, to the active character where there are no, where they are enemies but no characters. Place all enemies from this tile on an adjacent tile closer to the active character in the square that contains the door contains the door or stairwell connecting the two tiles if there is insufficient space use adjacent squares from the remaining enemies 
I don't like that card, but nothing we can do about it. Our first yellow card that we got, first the first scenario, spoiler alert, we were all clear the whole time. Now we're not. So what that card means is very simple. So you take another tile that is linked to the tile that the character's on that don't contain any characters, but contains enemies. You can see there's none here except for one right here. And that is the liquor. Very scary. So he's going to go to an adjacent tile, but there's no other tiles that are adjacent to him that's connected by the door except for the one that he's on. So you just move the liquor right up to this door. So poor Leon is going to come around to open this door and he's going to have a nasty little surprise waiting for him. This is not a good thing for Leon at all. He is getting into some deep doo-doo already. Run around 2-0 for Leon. What is he going to do? He is going to go one, two, three. <laughs> uh, he has one more action left and that would be to open this door because he completely bypassed this, uh, this zombie here. Now, he's not supposed to know that the liquor is behind the other door because you gotta think, this here is inside the police department. There's walls, there's doors, there's ceilings, there's floors, so he don't know. So for his fourth action, he is just going to open the door. Kablemo, just like that. Oh boy, poor Leon. That was his fourth action, and we're on to the reaction phase of his turn. All right, so for the reaction phase, this is the liquor card right here. There we go. So the liquor has the scuttle or scuttler that he can do for his special ability. He has the leaping claws, which is included into this, but he can attack at one zone away. So he don't have to move two spaces to get into to do the leaping claw. He can just attack right where he is. So he's going to attack him and hit Leon for one wound, unless Leon can dodge that with his two blue die. Now remember, this liquor has got a level two base. So because of that, Leon has to get a level two or three evade on the dice. If not, Leon's going to take another wound. He's gonna be knocked down pretty quick. Let's go and see if he can dodge it properly or not. Here goes. So what Leon has to get is either one of these or one of those. He dodges with two. He's got the, the medium, which is for level two, medium basis. So he successfully avoided the liquor from attacking him. Oh, Leon, you're so, so lucky. With Leon's luck and being able to dodge the whip of the tongue or the claws from the liquor. We have to now go on to none other than the tension phase from the tension deck, which is right here. Oh, give me an all green, because Leon can't have any bad luck now. Oh, all clear. All green, I said, but it's all clear. And this here is an unweaving oasis of light awaits ahead. The gloom unable to penetrate the blessed illumination. So that gets discarded. Now, we're back onto Leon's turn. Uh-oh, what's Leon gonna do, I wonder? One thing I forgot to do before we start Leon's turn is for the reaction phase two as well, this walker that, can you see on camera? Oh, he's jumping up and down. He was, he's on the same tile as what Leon is, so he has to move two and he couldn't do anything else, so he just moves one. And I forgot, sorry, but it's fixed now. Woo! All right, so we're into Leon now. So Leon can try to avoid the liquor. See, what it says in the book, what's a, it gives you kind of little hints on what's a good idea to do, but Leon can try to move back to bait this liquor to move in, and then when he evades him, if he evades him, he can lock the door and lock him in this beginning tile. But I don't think that's a good idea. Right now, Leon is gonna go one right here. Now he has to roll and evade. Now if he successfully evades this liquor yet again, he can continue his actions. If he fails, 
he stops exactly where he is. So let's go and roll the dice on that. Two dice, you know what symbols we're looking for because we just did it. Oh boy, look at that. Leon just evades all day long. That liquor got nothing on Leon. So that was one action that Leon did. Now he gets to continue on because he successfully evaded. So two, three, four. And he's right there. He's kind of a little clear, but he left the door open so that other walker that's here can eventually move up. Now, because he's not on the same tile, even though where it's the reaction part now for the enemies, he gets to still move because the door is open. Remember, if you watched the first episode, I said how important it is to keep the do to lock the doors behind you. Liam wasn't able to do that because he was stuck here. Unless he would stay there, did that, and then he would have been able to only move so it would be closer to the liquor to attack. So that's not a good thing. So right now, he didn't lock the door, but he's still leaving it open because the walker is going to be, the zombie's going to be, yeah, I'm coming in too. On to the reaction phase now. So let's just move this one walker first because it is linked, the door is open, so he just moves up one. He couldn't go diagonally because there's a corner right there. So now it is on to the liquor's turn. Now, I think the liquor is going to be able to perform his uh, scuttler. I'll just read the card. It's off camera, but just you trust me, I'm reading it properly. A liquor makes a move reaction every time a character on the same or a link tile performs a move action. Unless a character begins the move in the same square as the liquor. So if the character begins his move on the same square as what the liquor is, then the liquor wouldn't be able to do the scuttler. But he didn't, so now that liquor can do his uh, scuttler move or the leaping claws. The liquor moves two and makes an attack using the following profile. So liquor's going one, two, and the liquor's, Leon's probably thinking, I should have killed him. I should have killed him. So the range profile for this, it's one space away, which he is and he's going to hit Leon for two wounds. This is going to be some trouble for Leon, because if he gets hit two wounds, he's going to be in the amber already and very close to the danger part. He does have his uh, first aid spray, which I'm thinking he's definitely going to need. But right now, let's go to the dice rolling box so that we can see if Leon will successfully evade this attack that the liquor is doing to him. All right, come on, Leon, you can do this. Evade it, baby. Oh, he evaded. it. That's right, because this is a level two and the liquor's level two. If he, though, rolled this one, he definitely would have been able to evade and it would have been hit. But he was successfully able to evade that, so the liquor did not do nothing. Liam was very aware of his presence, of his tongue and his claws, and completely did like a Spider-Man spider sense move and whoosh, 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 ducked underneath everything that the liquor had in store for him. Good job, Leon. We're on to the tension deck phase now again. So let's pull this up. Oh, we totally forgot to do something too. Or no, no, I'm looking at the wrong one. Never mind. Oh no. Oh no. This is the one that has one of the uh, tokens for it. I'm going to read this off camera and I'll be back. To sum this card up. Pretty much something has grabbed Leon's ankle and is holding tight. So I had to take one of the tokens, which is right here, and place it beside Leon. Now, place the token next to the character. At the start of their next activation, they must pass an evade roll, and that one there is going to be a level one. Is it? It looks like level one. Yeah, level one. So they have to pass a level one, which is right here, level one evade roll. Yeah, or the action phase ends immediately. Then discard the token once the evade roll has been made. So that's what's going to happen for poor Leon. And it is his turn now because this is the end of the tension thing. So I'm just going to lay that for the discard. But now we have to do an evade roll because it is his turn. He gets two dice to evade and he has to get at least one evade or his actions end right away. And it goes on to the, uh, the zombie's reaction. This is bad. Oh boy. I mean, cut it. I'm just going to swing the camera back over just like that. Here it goes. 
You can do it, Leon. You can do it. And you did it. Oh, yeah. Good job, Leon. You are very quick and nimble on your feet today. You, has, you had a cup of coffee or something. So this is gone. It's discarded. And now he can go on and do his actions, finally. He's not going to try to uh, attack this liquor because he's just going to waste his time. The liquor has three health. And the only thing that he could do to it is maybe two damage is the max that Leon could do. Unless he did his three dice and he got three successful hits, then he'd kill the liquor, but he's not taking that chance. He is going to go here. He's going one, two. Now, he can't open that door because it's locked. He needs to find, he needs to find an item key to be able to open this up, a spade key, because it does, does say spade key. And if you notice, it's kind of off camera, but I'm gonna move the camera. You can see there's one here and so on. So Leon has to travel here, go up this way, see right there, and go in this door and start trying to pick up these to try to find a key. Or he can go this way where the stairwell is. In either case, Leon got some traveling to do because it's it's not looking good. He has to find the key before he can open that door. Oh no, so let's continue on. Then he was here. One, two, three, fourth action. He's opening the door right there. And now it is the, uh, the reaction for the enemy's turn. And it's pretty simple. This is still linking the doors open so that walker zombie moves there. This slicker here, now it has a movement of one. So because it has a movement of one, it's not in space, so the liquor just moves one right here and that ends it for the enemies. Now, we have to do another tension card and we're pulling all the colored ones right off the hop and I don't like that. So let's go to the tension deck, see what we pull now. Hopefully it'll be an all clear. Tension deck, tension deck. I'm feeling the tension already. Oh, and all clear. I'm going to read the text on that because it don't matter. It's all clear. We're safe. And then we're back on to the next round where it is Leon's turn. I just looked at the, the map in this scenario and this L-shaped corridor is yellow. So once he opens that, we're going to have to roll the dice to see what happens in there because it is yellow and we have to refer to the yellow chart. So first action, shaboom, opens the door. Eh. Eh. Just like that. Now I'm gonna be back, we're gonna roll and we're gonna compare it to the chart. I totally forgot that for Leon's fourth action, he did open that door. Again, when I start getting involved in certain games that I really enjoy, I just tend to just keep trying to push forward and go, 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 but I forget certain things. So we had to just recap fourth action he opened. We should have done the dice rolling for that door now, but we already drew the tension card, so we'll do it now. So the D6. We got a six and we compare it to the chart and six means is that corridor is, is empty. So there's nothing in there. So it wouldn't have impacted anyhow because we did get the six. We didn't get this here, which would mean that we would have to uh, roll onto the amber tile. So that yellow tile hallway would turn into an amber tile hallway, just like that. And I didn't want that. Luckily, we managed to be able not to do that. So now Leon has to get the heck out of there to get, make a round to the other room so that he can start searching. And we know exactly what Leon's gonna do. Leon is going one action, going in, and he's locking this door. The reason why is because the liquor that's back here that's off camera, whoop, there we go. The liquor that's right there, now the liquor's not gonna do anything because that door is closed and he can't go after him, he can't even advance. So that was two actions for Leon, let's go on. Three, four actions, and that ends Leon's turn. Now we're onto the reaction phase, but that door is closed. These doors are closed, so no zombies move at all. Now we're up back onto the tension deck. Let's go. Tension deck, tension deck, let it be green, all clear. Green, all clear. 
Booyah! There you go. Now we're back on to Leon's next turn. What are you going to do there, Leon? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up to try to open that door. That's right. He's using the Batman voice. One, two, three. Now he gets to open that door for his fourth action. Beep, 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 beep. Pew. There's no zombies in this room. Nothing is opened up. No linking tiles are opened up. So therefore, he's fine for the reaction part and we're just directly going to the tension deck. Tension deck, get it be green, get it be green. Oh, it's another green. Chances are we're gonna draw a lot of green tension cards. The reason why is because, just like from the first game, when you build your tension deck, it tells you what's put into it. And there's 30 green cards in here. And we also have, just so everybody knows, 30 green cards, uh, six amber cards, and two red cards. And we already went through a couple of amber amber cards. No red cards yet. So, you know, it's kind of good that we're trying to get rid of them as quick as possible, I guess. In either case, we're done with the tension round. We're on to the next round with Leon. So for Leon, he is going to go one. Should he lock that door? Oh, uh-oh, nope. He's not going anywhere yet because I'm totally forgetting this here square, uh-oh, that is a red square. So we're gonna have to roll the D6 again and compare to see what is in there before he goes to enter in the room of hell. D6 roll, let's go. He gets a two. We already know what two is in the amber because it just means that there are two more zombies. So a two in this is the same thing. Two zombies at the closest spawn. Lovely. Hmm. And the closest spawn, I just moved that item oh, thing of the way. These marks, they're kind of like the radioactive or biological marks, hazardous marks are your spawn. So two zombies spawn right there. Oh, so Leon, you get to go in though. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, Leon, what are you gonna do? Cause this is your turn. He's gonna go, whoops. He's gonna go one. He don't want them to be able to come up and attack him. So if he goes two, he's, uh, he's still gonna get hit regardless with that one if they choose to do that. And that, we've seen this in the first, the first uh, episode, which is the Leaping Claw, which, or no, that, that's liquor, sorry. The Suicide Lunge. And there's two of them for the Suicide Lunge. This is really bad. So what is, Leon, Leon can't really do anything else because actually, yes, he could. He's right here. So as he opened the door, spawned. So that's two. He can go three and four. I think that's a better move for Leon to do. The reason being is because if he stays in this room, they're gonna do the suicide lunge and he can't evade to get another hit and that's a bad thing. But now he kind of spaced himself out. He's making him come out to him. And I think that's the best thing for Leon to do. But that ends his turn and then we have to do the reaction thing. So even if the, the zombies did this, they can't do it around the corner but they do get to move one space each. So they are going right here. Just like that. And that ends the reaction part for the walkers. Nothing else happened in zombies because this door is closed. The door back here is closed. So none of these right here is gonna move. They're off camera, you can't see them, but it don't matter. So we're on to the tension deck yet again. We need another all clear. And it's probably gonna be that. Yes, look at that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, we're back on to Leon's turn for the next round. Leon has a couple of choices here. What he could do is he could jump out here, shoot in the door, and jump back. Or what he can do is he can go in and then try to evade to get away from him. But even if he evades, he's still going to be in this tile with him, and he don't want that. So I'm thinking Leon is just going to do exactly that. His first action jump there and then he's gonna shoot 
and he's hopefully going to try to hit one of the zombies or maybe two of them. But the only way to ensure this is he's going to use his three blue. So we're now he's gone down to 10 for his handgun ammo. And also into his equipment, if you can remember, he's got the handgun bullets that I picked up in the last episode. Discard, discard to increase this character's ammunition dial for the handgun. Custom handgun or Colt SAA by eight points. So he's got this covered. He's fine. He's just going to start shooting now. So let's go and see if he successfully hits one or both of the zombies right there. Rapid fire, cut the handgun, three, let's go. <sighs> okay. So he kills one, because he got the double hit. And the second one is a pushback. So he's able to push back the zombie one tile adjacent. So he just gets pushed back one. And then this one here, it just kind of like hits the zombie and the zombie's resilient. The zombie is like, you gotta be in the head, buddy. Yeah, so let's go and do that. That zombie got his hand out, reaching out, pew, he shoots him, he's gone, or pew, I should say. That zombie is deado. So that was only two actions, because he moved and he shot. Now for his third action, he's probably going to shoot him too as well. One more time, and he's going to, you know, he wants to put this so he can have some free reign to search in this room. So he's going to use three more bullets to rapid fire. Wow, he's getting low on ammo. So he's only got seven left now. He may be using the uh, handgun bullets a little sooner than what he thought, but no big deal, no big deal. Let's go to the dice box and see if he shoots that last zombie in the head. This is his third action. He's got one more after this in case he doesn't do what he has to do. But you can see here, he did it. He's got the double one. That means it's one wound. Zombies are only one wound deal. So he kills that zombie and he has one more action left. And that is, he's just gonna go in the room. Why not? He's dead. Well, they're dead already, but you know what I mean. So that was his third action. So fourth action, I'm just moving him out of the way. Your shadow is on the board. Fourth action, he goes, and he goes in there. So he don't have to lock this door because he already opened the store. We already did the red alert, so that's fine. And But the thing is, is they could be in another one of the tension cards, another zombie spawn. We'll just have to see, because that was his fourth action. You can't lock the door, because that would be a fifth action, and you can't do that. So let's go to the tension deck. Tension deck time. Please be another green. Oh, Claire. We're doing good. Yeah, doing pretty good. He has uh, seven ammo left. He's probably going to have to use his uh, handgun bullets just to be safe because there's two walkers here. You can see two zombies here. I keep saying walkers because I play a lot of the walking dead all at war. Anyhow, two zombies are here and he needs to come this way if he finds the spade key. But if I'm not mistaken, the uh, B deck has the stars key. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot that. So what that means is the white glowing shiny objects are for the A deck, so we can search them. But the B deck, which you can see one here, is like the, the reddish glowing star. There's another one off camera over here, and there's one here. They could be the ones that have the stars key. So he may be forced to go back this way where the liquor is like hmm, this is not a good thing at all but anyhow we're here and we're doing we just did the tension deck it was all clear so now we are going on to leon's turn for the next round all right leon old buddy let's get you over there so that's one action just picking that up so he picked this up not in focus, but that's off the board now. So now we have to pick a card from the A deck, A equipment deck, and hopefully he may have the spade key that he needs. We'll see. 
picks up this because that was one action move over two to pick it up and it is handgun nice he needs this too as well it wasn't the key but he needed this and that is good Woo. for his third action he is actually going to do a reload with his equipment to bring his ammo back up to 15 because he's at seven and it loads back up to eight so he got full ammo back because he failed the magazine full of bullets which is really good so that was his third action his fourth action is he's just gonna go here and that is it and then we're on to the reaction there's nothing to do on the board so we have to draft the tension deck again tension deck tension deck all clear again there's 30 all clear cards so chances are we're going to pull a lot of those hopefully because <laughs> there is yellow ones and there is red ones but we're lucky so far you know what i'm going to do is in the the style of board game maniacs to cut down on the time length of this video is i'm just going to start playing it off camera and when something happens or something big is going that i suspect may happen we're going to turn the camera back on and going to show you so until then just hang on it'll only be a brief second or two but the board's going to look a little different with leon in a different spot when we come back quick recap on what happened so far and that is after leon searched in here he was going to go back this way but what's the sense of going back this way because he can't unlock this door down here you can't see but the the door for the spade key because he didn't find it because what he found in this part right here when he did an item deck search is he got a green herb so he made his way out this way and he managed to shoot and kill one of the zombies here this other zombie because that one came out this got pushed because he hit but then the second time he shot he killed the one zombie so there's one left right here now and that's kind of where leon is at you can see the stairs is here but he needs to be able to open this door to get in here and look you can't really see on wait let me move the camera there you can see there you go so he needs to come over and look in here because that's the only thing he can do after he looks in there if he don't find that spade key he's gonna have to take the stairs to go to the second level because he cannot go and unlock that other door to search for the B item but he needs the B items be able to search the B item because he needs to get the stars key but unfortunately on the second level what Leon is not aware of is that there's three places you can search but they're only for A items so he's gonna try his luck to go here and if he searches there hopefully he'll get the spade key if he don't he's gonna have to go all the way over to the second floor try to find the spade key there they come all the way back so they can go into that room you can see my finger kind of in the upper left hand corner of the screen there into this room and search to see if he can find the b or, or the stars key but there is one item a b item down here so if he gets the key he got to kill that guy come in here unlock because he got the spade key if he gets it and then he's able to search here maybe he'll find the star key there and i'll have to go back there and confront the liquor and go right to the second level of the building that's a long spiel for that video so anyhow i'm continuing on wish me luck because i definitely need it stars what? leon actually managed to go unlock that door he shot at the the zombie pushed him back Managed enough space to go in. He went in. He locked the door. Again, remember, it's key thing in this game to be locking doors behind you so that no zombies can come in at you. And then he went here for his first, fourth and final action for this turn is he grabbed the item and he pulled it and he got none other than another green herb. <laughs> That's right. He didn't find them spade keys. So he's in trouble because... Now the only thing he can do is go to the stairs, which is off camera right here, and go to the second level and start looking for the keys because he can't go anywhere else. Like he searched all of the A inventory in the first floor, which I was afraid of. But now he has to go to the second floor and do that. This is really bad for Leon. 
Just a quick note onto this, this never came up yet because we never use them, but the second scenario has an item box which Leon is pretty much standing on. So I just looked it up into the core rules about the item box and it states, a character in the same or an adjacent square who has line of sight to an item box may spend an action to place any number of items from their inventory into the item box. Place the cards for these items underneath the item box token so it is clear they are inside. A character in the same or adjacent square who has line of sight to an item box may take any number of items from it into their inventory by making a search action. An item box token counts as a large base. So if you remember about Resident Evil 2 in the game where there was the item boxes, you can store equipment that you had there. And then if you find another item box, you can just pick it up, pick them out. So right now, Leon is at six. He has a maximum capacity of eight items that he can carry. So if he wanted to, he could drop something off in here. And then when we, if we do survive this mission and go on to the next one and there's an item box there, he can land onto it, open it up, and pick them out, like what he wants. But he's not gonna do it, I just wanted to mention that to you, because it's very important to talk about when things come up or in a game such as that. On top of that, just one more quick note I wanna talk about is the tension deck. Now, we are on uh, pretty much it's scenario 2A, and after 2A, once you are on 3A and onward, if you run out of cards in the tension deck, the game is over. And that means that the city, Raccoon City, has been taken over by the undead and we lose the game. That's how it is. But since we're still in uh, scenario 2A, if we run out of these cards, we just shuffle the discard pile and start it over again. But from the next mission onward, if we run out of item car the, the cards into the tension deck, the zombies have won and taken over the city. So that's a good point to make too as well. But anyhow, on with the game. Whoa, 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 what happened here? The board looks differently. That's because Leon was unsuccessful in trying to find the darn spade key he needs to unlock the stinking doors that are locked with the spade key. So because of that, he had no choice but to go over to the stairwell. You know, this stairwell that he's at right now, that was one action, so He's right here. So second action for him, he is going to go two, three, and four. That ends Leon's activation. And as you can see, no doors are open, so no zombies get any chance. When we go back to the tension deck, I've been pulling a lot of green cards, so I'm just gonna keep playing. Something big happens, we'll be back. On the Leon's turn, this is his fresh activation. So he is going to pull this A item. Now, what I notice with the A deck, I'll show you in a second, there's only two cards left. So one of them two cards are going to be, hopefully the spade key. Let's go to the card deck, the item deck A and look. As you can see, I didn't cheat. I just shifted them this way to see how many cards were left in the item deck A. There is, so this could be either the spade key or another equipment and I don't know what it is, but here goes. Why'd you be in the green herds again? Oh no, nice. So we did find our spade key. Unlock doors locked by the spade key. Yay, Leon did it. Well, he did one part of it anyhow. Oh boy, now he has a tough choice to make now. I don't know what that one is, but I don't care what that one is because we're just gonna go on. I got what I was looking for. When I said Leon has a choice to make now, he is close to the stairwell because that was one action. That'd be two, three, four. And then if you want to go to the stairwell and go back down to try to go and open that door that has the three B ones. Actually, he don't have a choice. That's all because on this here, Level two, there is no uh, B items on here. So he has no choice but to make his way to the stairs to go down. So he's going two, three, four, and he goes back to the stairwell. 
on the first floor. You know, because he's on the stairwell of the first floor, and that was his fourth activation, now the zombies get to do the reaction, and you can see this guy is standing right here waiting. Oh, somebody's there! Ha ha! So he is going to do that. Now, unfortunately, Leon is set up for the zombie to do the suicide lunge. And I'll just remind everybody, if everybody didn't see the first video, which you should go and check out the first scenario. Suicide Lunge says, the zombie performs a move reaction and attacks using the following profile. This profile is range one away and he tries to bite for one wound. And it's a suicide lunge. This attack cannot be evaded. After resolving the attack, the zombie is killed. So pretty much what happens here is the zombie moves. He's like, oh, he goes to attack him. Leon, as quick as he is, he didn't have enough coffee today. So, but he managed to pull his knife out and stick him in the head and kill the, the zombie. But unfortunately, Leon still gets one wound. And because Leon has one wound, it's bad. It's bad. The reason why I say it's bad because he's already took the one hit. So now, unfortunately, he's getting dropped in one more. So he's in the caution right now. He's in some pretty dangerous uh, waters right now. He's probably going to have to use like a Green Herber's first aid spray to help him. I think that would be a wise choice for Leon to do. That brings us on to the tension deck phase. So we're going to flip it over. As you can see here, there's a lot of all clear cards that we drew already. So this one here is another all clear one. Really great, really great. So now it is on to Leon's turn, and the first thing he's going to do is first action. He's going to actually use one of his green herbs, because he did pick up two from searching. And the green herb does state, Discard this card to heal this character or another character in the same or adjacent square one level. So Leon was in caution, so now he's going into the light green, but this is getting discarded because he used it. So he's, he's still managing his health okay. He's not poisoned or anything, which is really good. And I'm gonna continue on playing, and when something happens, I'll be back. You can see here for Leon, he was on the stairs. He went one, two, three. He opened the door because he had the spade key. Now, that was his fourth action. The reason why he's not going around to that room, because he is hoping and praying that the B item right here actually is going to be the star keys. Because if so, then you just have to make it to the stairwell again, which is here, and go to the second level and get into the star's office. Make sure there's nothing there that will stop him and he may be lucky. So far, he hasn't been that lucky though because he had to run up to the second floor to search to find the spade key to come back down again, to fight another zombie, and now he's going to try to get in here, because he got the door open for his fourth action, to search there, and hopefully that may be the star keys, it may not be, I don't know. Hopefully it will be though, because he's running around, he's getting tired, like he needs to rest. Come on, Leon, I know you're a machine, but you still need to rest. Let's continue on. Hey Leon, top of your turn, what are you doing? I know what he's doing. Going one, two, three for that B item and he's picking it up. <sighs> this is a very nerve wracking thing right now because if this card that he's gonna pick from the B deck is not the star's keys that he's looking for, you know what's gonna happen, right? I'm just gonna keep it rolling. And I'm gonna zoom out. So if by chance that Leon does not get the star keys, he's going to have to go back this way, go over, go down, open this door, which means this liquor is gonna be able to come up to attack him, go in here and search these three B tokens to hopefully find the star keys. Now, we already seen that Leon did do the, had to do the running around already because on the first floor, he never found the spade key. 
So hopefully, just hopefully, Leon's going to be lucky for a change because he is getting tired. Like I said, this is a lot of running around. I know it's a long clip, but I'm just going to roll. Oh, there it is. Okay. Going to lock the camera in place. So this is the B cards, and there's three of them. You can see, because it did tell me that them cards, I'm going to tell you right now, because it's into the, it's not spoilers, because it is not It is in the book. So for the B deck, you get one bow gun, which would be really cool, one red herb, and one star's key. So there is one of three possibility that he could get that. Now, this was the top one, sorry, right here. So either way, if I get, if I don't get, it's going to make the game, it's going to last a little longer. It's going to be entertaining. I'm having a lot of fun. So it don't really matter what I pick up here. It'd be cool to have a, a, a bow gun into your inventory. I was just counting. I got six cards in my inventory. So if I do get the bow gun or even the red herb, hey, no problem. I'll, I'll still be happy with that. But here we go. Reveal time. And it's the bow gun. Oh, whoa, whoa. oh, look at that. Oh. oh, this is the stir keys. This is what we've been looking for. And it says, unlock doors locked by the stars key. Now that's going in, so I am at seven for my inventory. I can't have anything else. Oh, that was my, wait, wait, where was I at? Okay. One, two, three, and the fourth one's picking up. So that finished my actions for that. <sighs> so you can see here, I'm just moving the camera. It's on a little mini table tripod, which I love. I'm gonna bring it here. Show everybody, this is a wall, that's a wall, that's a wall, this wall, this is an open door, but there's nothing in the hallway up here that I have to worry about. So for the reaction part, there's no zombies that are going to do anything so we're on to the um my mind is racing right now we're on to drawing the tension deck now having said that we've been lucky so far i'm just going to zoom out i know this is a really long clip i apologize for it but do you know what just so that you know we're all on the same page it's kind of building up the tension a little bit more because of the tension deck so we have what we need to finish the mission and we have to get there. But before we do that, we're going to have to have to draw an att attention card. And it's another all clear. Bam. Good. So now we're going to continue on with the game. I'll be back when we get closer. And we're going to be getting closer within the next two rounds, I'm assuming. Two or three rounds. I'm totally getting ahead of myself here. Now, I was starting to play it further to go up, but we forgot one thing. This room right here, judging from the map, is an orange room. So we're gonna have to roll the die for that. And also on top of that, where we had to go up to the second floor, um, the room we went in was also orange. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna roll for the two rooms. I'm gonna populate this one, and I'm also gonna populate the one on the second floor. So it's gonna make things a little more difficult. Again. I'm still new to this game. I'm learning the rules as I go along and I'm getting sucked into it very quickly because it's very fun and I'm enjoying it immensely. So let's go roll the D6 and see what happens. All right, so this is for the room that Leon is in first. I got a two. So that means that two zombies are spawn on the closest spawn point that Leon is. And right next to Leon is a spawn point, not in the same square, but the one over from him. So they're gonna be hanging out there and they're gonna ready to attack him. That's not good. So let's go and see now. Actually, hold on a second. Let me check on something. I think I'm maybe doing this still wrong. Sorry about that, it, it's just a, a momentary pause, but I had to double check. And the reason why I had to double check is when you enter a room that has a different color onto it and you have to roll onto the die, there's multiple uh, zombie spawn points into the room. So I just had to check to see if you have to roll for each zombie spawn point into that room or you just roll once for the entire room. 
I couldn't really find it into the rule book anywhere, so if anybody at all out there watching this has played it and found this answer, please by all means timestamp it and refer to a page somewhere so I know. What I did is I just searched on the internet quickly for about 10 minutes. It, it don't seem like 10 minutes because it's just the next cut. And what I managed to find on YouTube specifically uh, the, it's called What Culture Gaming. It is a video playthrough for Resident Evil 2, the board game. It's a full playthrough with Steam Forge games. So they actually had the creators of the game come and play the game with them. And at the start of it, they did enter. They were playing actually this same scenario, 2A. They entered in the yellow room and they only rolled a die once for the entire room. And I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't playing that incorrectly because it kind of just dawned, I'm kind of far into the round now to be into the game. It's like, oh, I made that mistake, but I would still like to catch it so I know for future reference. But I can't find anything. And because Steam Forged Games are playing this online with that channel, therefore I'm going by them because they made it, even though I couldn't find it into the rule book. So you only roll one die for the entire room and you go from there. So just so everybody is aware of that. Since we resolved that part, now we're on to the second room that I totally forgot to, to roll on when he first came up there. So D6 again, and he gets a two. Obviously, like, is this weighted for just twos all the time? Jeez Louise. So that means into the room in the closest spawn point, which would be by the stairwell, I'm going to spawn two more zombies. That is not a good thing at all. So now he is caught between four zombies and a hard place kind of thing. You can see the two zombies are very close to him. This is very bad. And also the two zombies are by the stairwell into the, into, uh, the level two or the second floor. So I'm going to keep playing this and I'll be back if something big happens. Hopefully nothing too big is going to happen now because it's getting very scary. And Leon is getting very tired. I had to record this part because it was something significant. Now, you notice the last clip or the second last clip. I can't remember, but the, the zombies were here and then it was the zombies turn to go in. They went in the, the Leon to attack him and Leon was successful in evading. So then it went on to the, oh, the, 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 the tension round and I pulled an all, cl all clear card. Again, all clear, Ugh. all clear card. And then on top of that, then it was Leon's turn. Now, before he was able to move out of here, he had to do an evade. And he did successfully do an evade for one action. He was able to step out. And for the second action, he just turned around. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna try to end these guys right now because they're just in my way. And I know I shouldn't, I should just try to keep running away, but I wanna take a shot. He chose to do two shots, two shots to them, two walkers. I'm gonna, sh they're zombies, yeah, and I'm gonna show you what it is. I'm just gonna zoom out with the camera, because I already rolled off camera. And did I hit them? Did I hit them? Oh, oh, shablam, look at that. Two hits, two double hits. So that means them two zombies are just completely done. I hit the two of them square in the head, each of them. So I killed them all. They're gone, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye. Dale, that was pretty cool. Uh, I just totally, totally lucked out there. So because I killed them two zombies, that was Leon's first action, second action. So now he's got two more actions. I'm just gonna swing the camera back around because I just took the walkers out of there off camera. Because it's, or just, pew, he shot them and they just disintegrated. That's just how powerful that handgun is. Two more actions left. One, two. And he's not gonna lock door. He's just breaking the first cardinal rule and he's staying there. And then there's nothing in here for reaction and we're going to draw from the tension deck now. Hold two down, two to go. There's the tension deck. Let's zoom out. Mm -hmm. You can see again, there's more all clear cards. Hopefully this is gonna be another one. All clear, bingo, bingo. Continuing on, thank you very much.
Leon did his last. He, well, his four movement, he got into the stairwell and he got up to here. So, and that was his fourth action, unfortunately. I kind of miscalculated this because it's very bad, bad, bad. Because now these two zombies are so close to him, they can actually perform the leaping claw. Or no, that's liquor, sorry. They can actually perform the suicide lunge. The zombies perform a move, reaction, and attack using the following profile. So again, now, because they're doing the suicide lunge, it can't be evaded, unfortunately. So they jump in, the two of them, just like that, into the square, and both of them hit poor Leon. So that's two wounds, just like that. So he's now in the orange, but Leon managed to pull his knife out and do a quick double tap and hit the two of them in the head to kill them. Because it does say with the suicide lunge that after resolving the attack, the zombie is killed. In this case, it was the two zombies. Both of them are dead. So therefore, Leon is suffering. He's only one away from danger. But them two walkers... Our zombies are gone. Now the thing is, is he miscalculated. I, I really should have just stopped and not went up the stairs and waited for my next turn and then went and tried to do evade to get away from them. But I miscalculated that unfortunately and poor Leon had to suffer. And it, it brought him down to health. So again, he is, you know, past one of the caution. So one more hit and he's into the danger. I think he's gonna have to use his first aid spray because he definitely needs it. But you can tell, actually, I better zoom out here just to show you, there's no other zombies here that can challenge him in any way. So we're on to the tension phase and we're gonna just keep continuing on, but you know he's going to heal on, one of, on his next turn, just so you're aware of that. We did another round and did a tension card and it was another all clear, luckily for Leon. So now it brought him here and his fourth action, he opened the door. We did, there was nothing to challenge, then we did the tension card and it was another all clear. So we're back onto Leon's turn here and he is going to go one, two. Now he's got the uh, stairs key and you need the stairs key to unlock this door. He can pick up the card. I'm going to flip that over like that, just to show you. Get in focus. Get in. There you go. Stairs key to open it up. And what's on the back of this? Oh, that's a heart key. That's for, it's double-sided. So anyhow, we're only looking at this one. It's locked. The star key has opened it. So that is gone. Goodbye. 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 Now, he has, he was here, one, two, open, that was three. Four, and he's in there and I think he actually we finished this mission now finally I hope so I'm just going to double check in the book here I'm walking away from the camera just so I can bring up the book and read how you successfully complete this scenario now remember you once you're in here the special rule for this is safe haven you don't pull the card detention deck card when you're in here and I'm gonna read this word for word out of the book. In this scenario, the characters must find the stars key, with, uh, which Leon did, and make their way to the stars office on the second floor. The players successfully complete this scenario if all characters are on the tile marked as the stars office and there are no enemies on the tile. This scenario takes place in Raccoon City Police Department. Oh boy, the crowd is going wild. <sighs> That's the sound of the, cloud, the crowd going wild. Zombies are... <clears throat> they don't have any taste for flesh. Now, because of that, and this is the stars tile, Leon has completed this scenario 2A into the campaign. Whew, this was more intense and a lot longer to play. And it, it, it did increase the difficulty a little bit, I have to say. I'm kind of worried about the next scenario that we're going to play. 
<sighs> but we're gonna have to fill out the sheet and what we have. But I'm just flipping through the book. If you can hear the book turning, see what the next scenario is. It's scenario three, it's heading back to Mervyn. Ooh, so, and Mervyn's character is a security guard or a police officer. Mervyn's the police officer, yes. Why didn't I remember that from the game? Jeez. Anyhow, that is it. That is all she wrote for this scenario of 2A, the star's office. Woo wee. There we go, board game maniacs. We have finished it successfully, but you can see that he was going down, Liam was getting knocked down pretty good with his health. I thought I was gonna have to use a first aid spray if it went on any further, but luckily it did not. The stars key is here, we used it, and the spade key. So I don't know if we keep that in the inventory for the next, or are they just gone now because we use them, we use them to their purpose. I'm gonna have to look at the, second, the third scenario and see if there's any special keys that we need. And if so, and we already have these keys, that needed to open it. Then I may just, you know, say like, hey, you get rid of them at the end of the scenario so that we find them again to make it a little bit more interesting for the game. I don't know. I will see and I'll let you know on our next video. So I hope you are enjoying this campaign for Resident Evil 2, the board game by the game. Oh, I'm just out of breath here. Whoo. So <laughs> by Steam Forged Games, it's, this game is starting to really suck me in as in suck me in enjoying it. I've seen me doing this before by playing The Walking Dead All Out War by Mantic Games. Phenomenal game. This game is living up to its hype. The Resident Evil 2 board game is definitely living up to its hype too as well. I'm really, really enjoying this game and I'm just wanting to play it more and more. What I'm probably going to do is after I run through whatever scenarios I can run through on video, then I'm going to try to get some people in so I can play like a four player game or a four player campaign. I don't know. Who knows what's gonna happen in the future? Hopefully that will happen because I would really like to do that because this game is a lot of fun, as I said. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed it. Are you enjoying it? If you are playing this game too, as much as what I am enjoying playing it. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Again, if I made any gross mistakes, just, you know, refer to a page number, timestamp it, and let me know what it is, because this is the way I learn because of you, the viewers out there. You help me and all the other board game maniacs out so much by doing some commenting, letting us know, like, hey, you made this mistake. I'm paid such and such. It does state you should do this. So please keep doing that. Keep up with all your great work. I know it is your very valuable time that you're taking to watch these videos and do the commenting because your time is the most important. There's nothing else more important in, in this world than your own time that you could be spending with anything, but you're spending it with us, Board Game Maniacs, by watching our videos and commenting and sharing and subscribing and hitting the bell notification. Thank you very much from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head and also my heart too as well because we would not be where we are today without all the viewers such as you that are watching this right now. And just to remind anybody who if you want to support Board Game Maniacs even more, you can go to our Patreon account, patreon.com slash Board Game Maniacs, and you can help support our channel and our gaming addiction to help keep the lights on to keep playing more games, new games such as this one, so that we can just keep increasing the quality, increasing the gameplay. I thank you so much for helping us. Patreon supporters, you guys rock with supporting Board Game Maniacs. Viewers, you guys rock too as well. I'm not counting anybody out. So if you could, you know, just go to Patreon, help support, $2 fee per month, that's all it is, or just one time and then cancel afterwards, it don't matter. It just helps support us even more and gets us out to get more games and play more games. But if you can't, that's not a big deal. Just by watching us, subscribing, that, 
that just helps us out there a lot too as well. And I thank you very much for that. <sighs> That's my spiel. I'm done now. That's it. I'm done for the night playing Resident Evil 2 the board game by Steamforge Games. We will be back and we will be playing another round as we go into trying to find Mervyn in scenario 3A for this campaign. So there you go. Communicate with everybody. It is very important. Communication is key no matter what the situation is. But most importantly of all, that's right, most importantly of all, and that is be a maniac. Ooh, don't be a zombie. Ooh, be a maniac. Ooh. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to keep up to date with Board Game Maniacs, click on the like and subscribe button to be notified when more videos come available. If you want to become an official sponsor of Board Game Maniacs, go to patreon.com slash boardgamemaniacs. Or you can go to streamlabs.com slash boardgamemaniacs1. That's right, and you can donate to help keep the lights on, keep food in our bellies, and play more games. We'll purchase more games, more equipment to make board game maniacs evolve and get bigger and larger because of you the viewers i thank you from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head for all of your support and until next time board game maniacs be a maniac